represents a menu item on the screen. And that allow our forklifts to move up nine steps. Our robot is able to square up the lines. Uh, two large motors really close together on the bottom. Feature on our robot is our forklift mounted on a turntable. They are powered by two medium motors that allow our forklifts to move up nine studs and down nine studs. They also uh, allow our turntable to move 360 degrees in a circle. Another one of the most interesting parts of our robot is how we use caster balls on shock absorbers to our advantage. We have two caster balls with the suspension, it allows us to drive smoothly over bumps. We originally had the caster balls without any sub suspension, but at certain speeds we're going over bumps, it started to vibrate causing our whole robot to vibrate. With caster balls it allows us to move smoothly over bumps and at high speeds and adjust for any errors that are in the mat or on the ground. Motor placement and the compactness of the robot is one of the most important parts of our robot. We have two large motors really close together on the bottom and we have a medium motor up here to power the forklift and all of this is in a small box to keep it agile and compact. Our forklift on a turntable is amazing but in order to have as much flexibility as possible for our robot we also have this dog gear in the back connected by an axle between these motors for the wheels and also some universal joints to the turntables so when this turntable moves this dog gear also spins and when I take that plate off, I can uh, put on an attachment like these, so that when the dog gear turns around, it uh, moves the attachments to complete missions in an easier and effective way. Uh, we have many useful attachments for a robot. This one is used for the large delivery mission. We made it big so that it can go over the chicken when the robot is pushing it across the table. We use these two arms down here to hold the wings. When this lever is pulled, the wing will drop. And we use this attachment here for several missions, and it can be put on and taken off easily so we can switch it during a competition. Another thing that gives our robot an advantage over others would be our choice of wheels. We used to use this wheel, and we considered using this wheel but we wound up using this wheel in the end of it. The reason we choose this wheel over others is because this wheel is just too small. The wheels we use are big, which gives us more movement per rotation. We move further along the map per rotation of the motor. Now granted, this one is bigger, but the difference is the rubber on this wheel is much more squishy than the rubber on this wheel. Because it's squishy, it's less accurate when it's rolling across the mat, which is why we wound up using this one in the end. An important thing about our ro robot is, is our cable management. We do two things to keep our cables neat and tidy. First thing is we use these bars uh, right next to the pores so to keep our cables away from our wheels so that they don't cause any drag. Second, we put the cables, well, the, the extra cables onto the hub just so that they don't affect any part of our robot. We organize our program into missions and we use a menu to select them. This stack presents a menu item on the screen and these two stacks are waiting for a button to be pressed. When the left button is pressed, it moves on to the next menu item and when the right button is pressed, it starts a mission. If either button is pressed when it's not on the menu screen, then it will abort any mission that it's on and uh, the forklift and turntable will reset. We have a program to follow a compass heading using the yaw sensor and proportional control. This stack sets it up and this stack moves the robot while constantly making corrections to the steering by adjusting the speed of each motor. For proportional control, we scale the air by the constant K. However, we found that low speed requires a higher K. So right here, we look at the speed and if we are moving slow, we increase K.